All right, so let's get started. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll make this very brief, so I won't bore you, I promise. Or, I don't know, I think I promise. Anyway, so um, Unity is one of the most popular tools for game development, but it's also one of the most popular tools to make serious games. And maybe what I'll do is I'll shift my presentation a bit from, it'll still basically be about plugins, but then it'll be more about why is Unity a popular choice for serious games and maybe some of the things that you guys could do with it. And then, like I said, I'm gonna squeeze 45 minutes into 10 and then five minutes for questions if you have, otherwise we'll go enjoy ourselves. Okay, so um, the use case of plugins, like, so let's just all get our minds wrapped around this for a minute. So Unity <coughs> is an authoring tool that lets you create interactive, immersive um, 3D experiences on a lot of platforms. Okay, cool. Um, for serious game uses, there could be potentially a lot of uses for that. But when we talk about plugins, why would you need a plugin? So let's just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, you'd want something that's uh, possibly for reusable, portable functionality. Now, of course, you can write reusable code and you can move the code from one project to another and, and so on. But um, there's something really nice about something that's worked, deployed, you know it's going to work, it does everything you want it to do, you can compile it into a plugin, it's binary, you just drop it in, it still exposes its interface, everything's good. C confidential proprietary functionality, we get this one um, a lot, especially when you think of why you'd want to use plugins in serious games. A lot of people have very um, you know, patented technology or technology that they consider very exclusive to, to themselves, and rather than just giving the source code or um, whatever, they can just package that up into a plugin. Um, performance would be another one. Uh, the performance of <coughs> um, .NET compiled code these days is obviously very fast, and Microsoft himself uses it for a lot. But of course, there are times when you want to the metal performance, right? If you're working at a atom smashing uh, facility and you want to crunch, you know, ter terabytes of data. Uh, if you're doing uh, bioengineering, biotech, there's a lot of cases where, you know, every cycle makes a huge difference, right? If you could save even 10% uh, on a cluster over a week, you're going to get a lot better performance out of it. And probably the most common case, the one that I come across a lot in Asia, is third, using third-party libraries. I got this thing over here, and I like Unity over there. How can I glue these two things together? And usually the answer will be that with a Unity plugin that you write yourself, you can wrap or you know, host um, a third-party plugin that wasn't designed for Unity inside. And I've done that myself, actually. Uh, recently, I released my own plugin um, for polygon reduction, for decimating um, very high polygon meshes down into something that could run in real time on an iPad or something. Um, and so that was the third party didn't support Unity at all, and it was up to me to figure out how to like glue these two things together. And then otherwise, uh, interface or other functionality, otherwise not accessible from within um, the .NET environment of Sandbox. Cool. So probably the most interesting thing in my whole talk will be this little video. The screen's a bit stretched because of the uh, aspect ratio, but I'm just gonna leave it. Anyway, uh, do we have audio? Very tricky. When I wasn't looking, he plugged it in. All right. Good enough. Okay. Anyway, so uh, example. What can you do with Unity? So somebody grabbed Unity. Um, they went down to their electronic shop, grabbed a whole bunch of wire and other crap, some cameras, and then they created this very cool um, live performing art. And since we were at Scape, I thought I would use this as my example. So. So behind the scenes, in real time, you have these actors wired up, and this is what's projected on the front screen to an audience of kids. And they actually have their own projector in the, behind the scene. They can actually see the audience. So they can look at the audience, see what the audience is doing. So they're essentially just putting a screen between the actors and the thing, but they're getting the kids really involved in it. 
right? So they put this together in like a couple of weeks. That included, this is Unity in the background, they made all the environments, they had artists do all the things. They got a bunch of, you saw earlier, a bunch of wire, sensors, all this stuff. Figured out how to munge it all together into Unity and bang, there you go. It was very, very successful. If you wanted to do something like this, you can do this in Unity very easily. Yeah. Okay, like I said, that was probably the coolest part. So. All right, so possibilities. Um, so to wrap your head around it, I just threw in this slide. So Unity uses Microsoft's .NET technology. .NET is simply an interoperability technology where you, they take a bunch of different source code languages, they compile it to a common bytecode format, then they have a runtime engine that can read that. So it allows you to mix and match your languages and whatever. And then they've taken all of the Windows stuff developed over many, many years, and they've created tons of libraries, assemblies. Um, so for database access, accessing a parallel port for a printer, serial port, whatever you want, right? It's all there. So Unity uses that, so you have access to all that. The Unity editor itself is scriptable in .NET languages, um, the most popular being C Sharp and JavaScript. The editor scripting is a superset, not a subset of functionality. So I'm going from the high level down to the low level. What that means is that anybody who's written any game in Unity already knows how to write plugins. They already know how to script the editor, okay? And all Unity um, game or, or serious application programmers in are editor programmers as a result. Editor scripts can be made in plugins, and Unity itself is built in Unity. So, like, if you just look at Unity, it's kind of, let me switch this to a lighter theme here. That's a little better. So, like, you know, if you clicked on something and then you opened up, uh, like, all these animation windows or whatever, so just all the things that you see inside of Unity itself is built in Unity, right? So all of these bits, all of this bit, all, so everything that makes it look like an app <coughs> is actually built in Unity itself, which is also makes what Unity is very stable, right? Because we're actually running our own, um, just editing Unity. You're already using Unity. So we've got um, last month <coughs> alone we had 4 million launches of the player. So you're talking day in, day out by a lot of professionals. And so as a result, there's a lot of possibility, right? So anything in the outside world for simulation use that you wanna do, vision libraries, augmented reality, just, hey, I've got this device and it spews out infrared and you wanna take infrared sensor, plug it into a USB port, get that data and do something with it. Very easy to do in Unity. Usually in an hour or two, you can get something basically working. Okay, so types of plugins in Unity, there would be two major types. They'd be what we call managed or native. So managed code means that it's the, a .NET language, okay? So say C Sharp. <clears throat> or you can also do C++ managed, or you can do C++ unmanaged. Unmanaged means native. It means it just runs to the metal on the hardware. There's no virtual machine running it, but it also means there's no interoperability or anything like that running as well, okay? So managed plugins just means .NET DLLs. It's just compiled code and can be used by Unity free, the free version. Now this could be important. For native plugins, that means you're compiling native code, the old style, right? Windows 3, Windows 95, Windows XP, all of those, right, before .NET came out, when you had all those DLLs, dynamic link libraries, those were native code. You write the C, compiles to assembly, runs on Intel-only processors, right? So manage means it compiles to the .NET virtual machine, which is an assembly language all of its own, and that can run anywhere. So we can take that manage plugin, we can drop it into Unity, and then we can build an iOS app or a Samsung Galaxy Tab app, which is an ARM processor or any other kind of processor, and it will still just work, right? You don't have to worry about, oh, the hardware's not gonna work, or how about PC, how about Macintosh, or whatever. So managed plugins just work across all supported Unity devices. Native plugins, because they're native, have to be built for every single different platform. 
Yeah, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so manage code plugins. Um, what you can do is to do that. I, I was going to take you through a full on demo, but I think I'm going to skip over it. Basically, we use Mono Develop. Mono Develop is this tool here. It, ship <coughs> it ships with Unity. So because .NET is Windows only, uh, Visual Studio is Windows only, so Mono is a multi-platform version of .NET, and Unity sh has our own license that we've done with the uh, Mono people, which is Novell. And so we actually own that source code base, and we produce our own editors, our own compilers, our own everything based on that. Yeah. So for using this environment, um, then you can simply create an empty project, type your code like you would normally do it, build and deploy, you're done. Means the workflow is really easy. If you're actually the developer of the plugin, you can get Unity, write all your code just in plain old vanilla script. When you're all done, you just drag those scripts, drop them into a new mono developed project, build a binary library, right? So it's a very nice workflow to get something that you want to like bundle up. Maybe it's proprietary, maybe it's something you want to release, um, you want to sell it in the asset store for Unity, whatever you want to do, but a very easy way to do it. Whereas native code plugins, now you're going to have to do for every single platform something different. So you're talking about on Mac um, for iOS, uh, you're talking about Xcode um, for Visual Studio for the Windows, command line, whatever you want, 32-bit C um, for those one programmer in the audience. <laughs> you have to make sure you declare your code as extern C to avoid name mangling. You build and deploy and then use a standard import statement write declarations, methods, marshal the data, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then native plugins, more involved is kind of the point here, right? So you gotta give up a little bit of something if you wanna get that uh, extra speed or you're wrapping um, another DLL, which you're gonna need to do. So deployment, um, you can just drop the plugins straight into Unity. So if I look at, sorry, Unity here. So what's great is, it's kind of hard to see here. So one of them is a bundle on Mac, one's a DLL on Windows, so it makes it really easy. Unity will automatically pick up the definition that you want and uh, make it work. So some questions. Do we support iOS on, uh, do we support plugins on iOS and Android? Yes, those are native. Um, again, you have to get the dev kit from, for Android or the dev kit for iOS. You build your plugin as you normally would. We have a custom folder, you drop it in there, we'll deploy it for you automatically. Uh, another common question is, can I write plugins for the web? No, you cannot, right? Because we have security sandboxes. There's no way to download a plugin to the user's drive and run that as native code, yes? You can do like Google um, native, uh, the native client, um, but that's a little bit different, yeah? So generally, just like Flash, just like anything else, you can't do plugins in the web. Okay, so for third-party native plugins, I mentioned creating a wrapper. If you're uh, seriously thinking about doing this, there is a little bit more work to it, but basically what you do is you create a native app to speak to that native plugin in the way it expects, and then you, in, you interface that native plugin to Unity in the way Unity expects. So you simply glue the two together, and um, then simple considerations. If you want to use managed code plugins, um, it's going to help you a lot. That means it's going to be able to go to all devices that are supported. It's um, drag and drop. You can locate them anywhere. You could sell it in the asset store. It gives you a lot of possibilities. Um, if you are doing native plugins, then it's going to be up to you to kind of manage that. It's quite easy to do in Unity. The only problem is because you have a level of indirection when your plugin crashes, uh, and they will usually because it's native code, there's no easy way to debug from a Unity editor into the player process, into the plugin, plugin into the third party plugin. The debugger just cannot attach and debug it. So the debugging is a bit more trial and error. So therefore, you need to do much more over engineered, tons of error checking, tons of logging, just to be sure that the code is like really bulletproof. And um, you should stay with 32-bit for now just so that it can run across all platforms. There isn't really much advantage to going to 64-bit. As a matter of fact, it can be slower 
with plugins because all the data has to be copied in and out um, between the two environments. So 32-bit is a universal choice. And that's it. I promised I would keep it short, and I did keep it short. Probably bored some people, but if you have any questions about uh, what Unity could do, or you're really interested, you can come up and I can show you some code and we can do stuff like that. Cool. Everybody want to get to the networking part? Yeah. <laughs> Leave everybody with a smile at the end of my talk. All right. Okay, good. Anyway, thanks for sticking around and listening, and let's go enjoy the networking.